right? You had no idea. But we're telling you, yo, he unplugged the camera. That's not normal. If you, if you found out that Deontay Wilder unplugged his cameras and he knocked a dent in Fury's forehead and KO'd him in the third round, and you found out he unplugged the cameras, wouldn't you ask, yo, what's that about? Wouldn't you at least ask, what's that about? Because that's not normal. Sure, they waved goodbye to us and unplugged the camera. Do you know that? No. Those are the words of uh, Titan or Drew Titan as Sugar Hill was being interviewed by Barbershop Conversations. And this is the conversation that went on between the two. And they were reiterating what they are their findings of what happened February 22nd that night. Okay. Um, and Drew was. Uh, Calmly, calmly as he could, was explaining to Javon Sugar Hill, like, yo, what if Deontay Wilder would have done the same thing and he hit your man and knocked your man out in the third round and put a dent in his head and then you would have found out uh, that they turned the cameras off, okay? And he asked, did you know that? As you heard Javon Sugar Hill say, he said, nope, I didn't know that. So let's see what he says a bit further. Yeah, yes. So you're saying you don't know. It went just like this. And unplugged the camera. That happened. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. That really happened. So when they unplugged the camera, so that, then, then that has something to do with me. So as I stated before, the, my normal routine was what it was. JG's was in there. He was right there. There's always a representative there. So he touched the pants. He touched the gloves. He touched everything. He was he was okay with everything. So something to do with that camera. Honestly, really, I don't even care about no camera. With that <laughs> the camera got to do with anything. The commissioner's there and JD is there. The camera's just a plus for the fans. And that's just to make Mauricio, you know, that's Mauricio just so Suleiman cool. also. So. Javon Sugar Hill pretty much let him know, like, hey, you're saying that the cameras were turned off and you would have asked me why. And of course, you heard Javon Sugar Hill was like, OK, when you're talking about the cameras being turned off, now that concerns me because now you're trying to put me in that realm or in that situation that I was cheating or I helped Tyson Fury cheat or I was a Panama Lewis. Or I was Antonio Margarito's uh, trainer before Robert uh, Garcia. I don't know who that was. Um, but that's what they're trying to imply. And like he told them, well, I don't know anything about the cameras being turned off. But JD's was there. The commissioners were there. And it, when you see when he was waving and then the shit went off. Okay, well, here's the deal. The shit went off. You seen the commissioner walking by. So you know he had to be in there at that same time. It would be different if you only seen certain people. But like he just confirmed, he was in there, he touched the gloves, okay? He um, he touched the gloves. JD's touched the gloves. The commission touched the gloves. So what the fuck is the issue? That's my counterpunch. What is the issue really? Because it's one of these things where it's one thing to talk about a person's past. Now, does Tyson Fury have a shady past? Of course he has a shady-ass past. That's no secret. And then uh, what, like, just like um, Drew Titan made an made, made a, a interesting analogy, right? It was interesting because it was clever. He was like, yo, Javon, you used to be a cop, right? Yeah. You ever arrested the same person twice? It was like, man, I, I don't know. But he said, well, you know when you brought somebody in, you slapped that go that 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 metal on the wrist and you brought him in and you seen that they have a record. Okay, at this point, you know this guy is a criminal. So you're more likely to not be as lenient on this guy. So isn't it probable for these guys to, t to think that he could have possibly done something based on his history? And see, the answer to that is does he have the cap the capability to cheat? Sure, he has a Excuse me. Sure, he has the capability to cheat. But what people don't understand is 
the way that they're saying this man cheated, he couldn't cheat and there's nothing, no fucking evidence that holds weight. He's saying it holds weight based on what he did before. And they, they throw the, they, they talk about the first fucking fight. He's talking about arm punch, like wrist punches. Like he has his, he has the uh, fist in his wrist, which that was the first fucking fight. See what they're, what they're really not telling you is the breakdown between the first fight and the second fight that you can bring up Nicholas Ashbury. That's fucking sparring. It has nothing to do with a professional fight anyway. So if Tyson Fury was beating up his sparring partners, doing some shit like that, that makes him an asshole. But at the same time, does that make him a cheat to the level of being suspended or, or other criminal acts? No. Okay. That's the whole thing about this whole ordeal. Okay. So when people are trying to say, well, you know what? It makes, it makes us suspicious of Tyson Fury. Should you like the guy based on what he did? I mean, you shouldn't have liked what he did, but should you base what he did versus what he did that day? Okay, in his last fight versus the fights prior to that, you shouldn't do that type of shit. You know, and if that's the case, every fight that he wins, you guys got to wag your fucking finger. You see what I'm saying? You guys are just saying, oh, well, because it's Wilder? Because that's what I'm seeing. It's like, well, you've seen him fight this way. You've seen him fight that way or this, that, and the other. And, and Javon Sugar Hill said, well, I've seen how he uh, throws a punch. He can properly throw a punch. And I've seen he was slapping with Ben Davison. He was learning to slap with the jab like he was. He's an awkward, tall, big, tall fucking guy. You know what I mean? So he's not. he doesn't really punch and sit out on his punches anyhow, as you've seen. But as, as he goes to the crunk gym, he can learn something. So it's just saying that he can't learn how to punch. He can learn how to be a better cheater. That's what's really being implied. Based on what he's already done, that's what's saying, hey, there's probable cause for us to doubt Tyson Fury. But your evidence is basing that off of shit that happened five years ago. 50% of that shit, the wild boar meat, uh, uh, the nandro alone because of the wild boar meat, the suspension, okay, that happened a year later after the after the wild boar meat bullshit. Then all of a sudden, a farmer comes out and says this. Is it um, a coincidence? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe fucking not. You know what I mean? Because see, if we can reach to that degree to look for something, to find something for Tyson Fury, we can also reach for other shit. Just like what happened yesterday. Perfect, perfect example. Fucking Wilder. Uh, switched his gloves at the last moment. You know, so you know if everything's in the spotlight and everybody's being nitpicky and reaching for it or searching for every little fucking thing, because you know the Tyson Fury fans are going to do that, and they should. Why? Because Tyson Fury is being attacked based on what he did five fucking years ago, what he did with a sparring partner that ain't fought in four years, um, and a farmer that supposed just came out of no fucking where. And said, yeah, I lied about that whole deal. Well, guess what? He already was suspended for two years. So what else you got? He was still suspended. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, you're suspended on the first offense. If anybody should be pissed off, it should be Vladimir Klitschko. Because if he was taking that dro Nandrolone and he was taking wild boar meat and then that was his excuse and they let him off the hook, there's a possibility that he took more fucking Nandrolone. Okay, so we gotta you gotta look at it because if they bought that bullshit and they just told Tyson Fury like they supposedly did, they told Tyson Fury to hey, all right, you need to eat this and you need to eat better. So he's like, all right, good. It was from wild boar meat. Hey, go tell him it's from wild boar meat and you know whatever, right? <clears throat> so the farmer lied. So that means him and his cousin should have could have been taking that shit the whole time, and then a year later he gets busted, which is weird. You wait a year after already diagnosing a person. You know what I mean? That's just like going and taking a drug test and they're saying, oh, this this is in your system. And then you're like, oh, well, that comes from this. Okay, well, you need to do this. And then a year later, they don't test you again. They just decide, hey, you know what? You really did fail that drug test you took a year ago. That's some weird shit. That's the weirdest thing I've ever, ever saw. Nothing and nobody has ever been, well, I can't say nobody. Carlos Molina did the same shit. The same guy that fought Wilder and Joshua. Okay? Molina went through that same bullshit. And they waited a soul certain amount of time. And then they pressed charges on him and hit him with a, uh, with a, a dirty uh, drug test at, at way after the fact. 
You know what I'm saying? So which is which again all by itself is some fishy shit. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of factors that does stink about this. But does that make Tyson Fury? And here's the thing: it don't make you alone to like the guy anymore just because he did something wrong. But just because he beat the wrong fucking guy that night don't mean you should bring up shit that don't matter to that present day. That's all I'm saying. You know, and I got another uh, video to do about this concerning Mr. Tay Jones, you know, and some key points I need to bring up with that. So stay tuned for that. But this was a very informative um, interview with uh, Drew Titan and Sugar Hill and Fred from Barbershop Conversations. Fred was just kind of chilling, just letting him talk, right? You know what I mean? Because Drew Titan was doing a lot of talking, you know, and Sugar Hill, and you, and you look at it, he's not really a talkative person. So you could look into you're like, why is he so fucking quiet? You know what I mean? But it is, it is what it is with him. Let's see what else he has to say for a few seconds. He said he was in the entertaining to watch the guys inside the locker room and things like that. That got nothing to do with the fight. You got the committee, you got somebody from his camp there, his trainer is there. It's supposed to be it's supposed to look looks out for his well being. His trainer was there. The same as I had a fighter. My, I had a representative for my team over there watching Wilder get his hands wrapped. If something was wrong, it should have been said then. Mm -hmm. Hey, counterpunch. See, you can't get any crystal clear than that because, see, regardless of what the camera, they shut the camera off. That's for the that's for the public. That's not even for anybody else. What was important is what happened right in the dressing room. And see, just, and just like like uh, uh, Jav uh, Javon Sugar Hill stated, if something was wrong, they should have came out with it then. You don't wait after the fact, and you sure don't fucking wait seven, eight months, and and to reveal, hey, I think you cheated. You see what I'm saying? Like that type of shit. It was either it's either like this: if they still believe that he cheated the way they claim he did that night. Because it's so many different things that they, they throw at him. And you know why they're basing all that shit on him? It's because of something, he, again, he did five years ago. See, they first, they taught, they started with the drug test. They thought he was going to fail. So, oh, he's going to fail. Because I know there's no way he could have took those punches from Wilder and then dropped Wilder the way he did. Wilder's a tough son of a bitch. That'll never happen. Boom. They both tested negative. Okay. And then the floppy glove from the first fight arrived. Right. And then like uh, the spike water, I believe, came after that. Then it was the fucking referee. You know what I mean? Then the spike water had to come from Mark Breland. Remember that shit? All this was right at. These are all stair steps that happened right after each other, right after each other. And they all was like, yo, OK. And then Glove Gate 2, then like, oh, look at that glove. Then Glove Gate 2.0 started. Then the Martin Carefoot shit started. Then that made it look real shitty. Then Nicholas Asbury started. So then um, the things that they were reaching for became a lot more easier to grab because people were making shit available to reach, right? So this is what we had. We had Nicholas Asbury, uh, again, assassinating the character of that person to give you that mindset that this person had the capability of cheating because he's cheated before. You know, this is like some court out of court case slash court case shit that went down with Tyson Fury. Why? Because Tyson Fury beat the wrong fucking guy. And even I thought Wilder was going to knock him out. Nonetheless, it is what it is. Was it weird to see? Yeah, I mean, he was beating the shit out of Wilder. But did was Wilder like an, an offensive fucking master? No, he was not. He was a guy with one fucking punch. Let's face it. Jab right hand. Sometimes he throws a left hook. Sometimes he throws an uppercut. But those are far few and fucking between. And by the way, slapping with punches and rabbit punches, how he mentioned, Wilder does the same shit every fucking fight. You ever heard of Slappy Wilder? Why do you think that cat, um, uh, what's casual boxing talk, Slappy, Sloppy Wilder? Because he slaps with his punches. So Wilder does the same shit and he does rabbit punch. And like you know, guys, we did that live. And in live, we seen how Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury both, and I counted each time, one of these guys gave each other rabbit punches. They both hit each other behind the head. Okay? So 
I think Tyson hit him over the head maybe 12 or 13 times. And I think Wilder hit him over the head about 10, 11 times. I don't have the tally, but if you go back and look at the live stream, we counted each file. And they do the same shit. Wild, and I, I keep telling people, Tyson Fury couldn't punch. He didn't sit down on his punches. And I know damn well Deontay Wilder doesn't punch properly. He's learning how to use the right hand, I guess, properly. But he doesn't punch and he doesn't lay down on his punches. Maybe maybe Deontay Wilder, maybe he's even-handed and don't even fucking know it. He just don't even, he can't punch properly because everybody's so fascinated with his fucking right hand. He might can knock people out with his left hand. But people don't even really think of that. And people will look at this channel and go, oh, you're hating, you know this. Is no, I don't. And I'm just showing you what's real and what's not real. Based on what a person did in his past does not automatically mean that he cheated. In this fact, he couldn't cheat like the way they said he cheated. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about this particular interview. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.